Hey guys, today I'm going to make knives out of these two bars of 5160 steel, then add extra carbon to one of them, and then pit the two knives against each other to see which is better. The process is called carburization, and I've done it before in the bayonet and burden trout knife, the murica knife with tums, and the wagon wheel knife. We're going to fashion up our knife blanks out of our two bars of 5160 and make them as close to identical as possible. The plan is to put our test knife in a canister with charcoal and roughly 15% baking soda then heat it to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The carbon in our charcoal will gasify and diffuse into the steel a few millimeters where it will hopefully deposit. As you can see, we've pre-ground part of our bevel to make sure its entire thickness is penetrated with some amount of carbon. This is our wood charcoal. We're going to grind it up, mix our peanut butter with the chocolate, and do what feels right. I've clayed the outside of the steel canister to help protect it from high temperatures since its walls are pretty thin. And there it is. So we're going to go spark it next and see if there's any difference. I'm hoping that adding the carbon will make a noticeable difference in the way it sparks. I have to be honest, I don't really notice much of a difference. So I'm going to put it back into another canister with a test piece of iron, this round piece of iron. And we'll put it in the oven for another hour and we'll just see if the iron gather some carbon. It'll be really easy to tell. Here's the original iron bar. No flowering, no bursting. Yeah, and in the, in the test piece we have some bursting there. So here's our normal 5160 and we'll compare that with the 5160 that's been two hours carburizing now. And I think there's a difference. I think there's a small difference. Right, it's time to just do it. Let's let's just can up our blade and a smaller test piece of 5160. Uh, we're going to put our car, uh, carburizing concoction in there, throw it in the oven for four hours. What the heck? And for added protection, I've put some stainless foil around our canister. We don't want a hole burnt in our outer canister and then have our test steel oxidized into bits. Now, I didn't do any reading before I started this, and I didn't contact any metallurgists, and I probably should have, because there's a chance that this isn't going to do anything at all, or it's going to ruin the steel. <laughs> so it looks pretty good, except for one spot. You guys notice up here near the tip? Yeah, I don't, it's a little funky. I don't know if it started to blister. We get some, you know, little blister steel going on up there, or if it burned. I don't know. At any rate, here's our normal 5160. And next is going to be the carburized version that's been in the oven for four hours now, 2,000 degrees. I'm definitely noticing more sparks whipping down the belt at this. All right, so our control piece and our canister piece have both been heat treated the exact same way. 1,650 degrees soak for 15 minutes, 1,550 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, 1,450 for 15 minutes, quench for 1,525 in medium speed oil. <clears throat> and now they've both been etched and polished to 2,000 grit here at the front. Oh, and they were tempered to 400 degrees. So, all right, here's the hardness testing results after cleaning up the steel a little bit. This is the carburized version. Average was 63.1 after five different tests. Range was 62 to 64. This is the standard 5160. Uh, average 62.1. Lots of 62s, 162.5 here over on the edge. So cl clearly, after spark testing and doing you know identical heat treats with quenches and tempering and all that, these steels are different at this point. You know how different they are on the surface as opposed to the core, we don't know, but but um, clearly we've added some level of significant carbon to this one. So I've etched these and polished them. They look different to me. Maybe the grain boundaries are a little smaller on the carburized version. It's a little darker. Maybe there's more carbon. I don't know. The point is. 
they look different. I really can't interpret this in a professional way. My microscope stinks. You guys tell me what this shows, if anything. The 5160, regular 5160 is going to get a regular 5160 heat treat. And our carburized version, we're just going to go back to the previous uh, heat treating cycle that we did in the past for lack of anything better. I lost footage of tempering down the normal 5160 piece. It tempered to 60 HRC from 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so our test piece, our carburized piece, is a little bit more complicated. I had to temper it multiple times to temper it down to get it to, to 60, the same as this one. That's what I decided to do is to get them to the same HRC. And so it took several temper, uh, temper cycles. There's a patch up here that's testing 62, 63. There's a bunch of 60s here, then another 63, and then 60 here. It scratch tests very much like 60. Uh, 65 digs in easily. 60 uh, file digs and doesn't dig, digs and doesn't dig, very much like it's right on the line, and then a 55 skates very easily. So it file checks like it's 60. Most of these readings are 60s. I think there's just some carbide pools or some unequal carbon distribution in here giving us Every once in a while, something like a 62 or 63. Roughly, you know, 10 to 12 thou, both of these all the way across. So it's as close as I'm going to get it. So the spine of the knife here is within a few thou of each other, maybe a three thou, four thou in some places. We're putting a 17 degree bevel per side on each of the knives, 2000 grit. So the blade geometry should be as close to each other as I can get. Let's get into that sisal rope. Catching up pretty good. No longer shaving hairs, no longer catching on a fingernail right there where it did most of the work. The rest of it's pretty good. So we called the normal 5160 knife at 420 cuts and are moving on now to the carburized test knife. Uh, now note, both of these knives were ground kitchen knife thin at the edge. So they are more like kitchen knives than EDCs at this point. We're going to have to change that a little bit when we move into some batoning and uh, durability. popping hairs off my arm but still snagging on the paper. The answer is right there where that black mark is there's a tiny tiny little chip and um, I, I don't think I don't think I'll be able to get you to see it with the camera. So let's flex the edge laterally to see if it chips or returns to its normal shape. Hmm. Why is it making that noise? And a couple little chips in here but nothing over in here. I think if you go back, I went back and I looked, <clears throat> and um, as this came out of the canister, there was sort of an area right in here that was had some bubbling in it and was a little bit unusual. I wonder if that area got more carbon, extra hot, something than the rest of it, and now it's just sort of brittle. What I decided to do was to cut the knife short to get rid of that area of the blade and regrind the tip to a similar geometry just to see what happens. Uh, this time the brass rod test is all up and down. The knife is normal. We don't we don't get any um, chipping. But you know I don't know is the test still valid? I I think right. it is. We'll see how far so we get the difference before, between performance more. is great. The knives aren't exactly the same anymore, but they're still pretty close. We just completed 300 
cuts. Just popping hairs right off. That's 450, so. Yeah, we're down to about 50% of the hairs in the cutting area from there to there. So, make it last one. All right, we're at 550. I'd say taking off one in 12 hairs or something. <laughs> All right, where's our, where's our printer paper? It's a, it's a chore now to cut the rope, so I, I think this is probably gonna be good. The problem is sometimes it cuts okay, sometimes it doesn't. It actually does pretty good with this advertisement paper. I'm having a hard time deciding if it's done or not. I just don't know, y'all. Yeah, okay, that's fine. It, it tends to catch right there enough that um, we'll just go ahead and call it. 420 cuts in the regular 5160 and 550 cuts in the carburized steel. Let's take the bevels to 20 degrees to add a little bit of edge durability and try some batoning and stress the edge. See how tough these steels are. I think we already have a clue. One of them is probably not as tough as the other. This board is dried cedar. It's a little bit harder than the pine studs I have been using, but it chips away better, so it makes the testing easier to perform. I'll probably start using this in the future too. It was shaving 40% of the hairs, but it's just hanging in a lot of places on the paper. I bet we got some rolls. Now for our carburized knife. So it shaves about half the hairs on my arm. I think it's doing better than the first one. It's, um, I guess it's a little bit hard to quantify, but I, it has a smoother cut. I think it cuts uh, without as much snagging. Let's go look at the edges under the microscope. They each have some stretches that look worse than the other, but I think all in all, they're roughly the same to me under a microscope. Maybe the rolls are a little 
deeper in the 5160, and that's why it snagged more. I don't know. I don't see a big difference under the microscope. Let's take another look at toughness by running them through a quarter inch mild steel bar, basically a destruction test, versus our normal 5160. And lots of rolling, just a big edge deformation there. It's very thin, I expected that. The point is it didn't chip or break. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> wow, all right. So let's do a post-mortem. So I went ahead and broke this to look at the grain. Um, this is the control, the original 5160 heat treated. It's very tough. Tough means we don't break, we don't fracture, we don't chip. It does roll, it does deform. That's you know, probably because it's very thin behind the edge. Um, it might have done a little better than that if it, if it weren't so thin right there. But this, this is what tough steel looks like. Def, uh, either no deformation or deformation, but uh, absence of chipping, fracturing, all that stuff. Over here on our test piece, clearly uh, fractured and chipped. So uh, very, very much less tough than this. So I think you guys can see the grain structure here is still pretty big. It gets a little finer towards the edge, which is interesting. That I think that's the part with more carbon. Look at that nice, fine, silky grain. This is on the Control 5160. With more durable geometry, we should get this through a nail in better shape. So now I took the edge back a little further and we've convexed the tip. Tiny little roll. So that's just a great lesson in blade geometry's contribution to edge durability, um, among other things. Probably won't cut as much rope, though. Uh, let's repeat the heat treatment of our test piece and see if we can shrink the grain size some by more soaking and quenching from a lower temperature, like 1475 instead of 1525. Same temper in HRC. I ran it through a nail. Chipped a little less, but this grain size is still huge. Did I burn this steel? Is there too much carbon in it? Was this a dumb idea to begin with? Who knows, maybe it's all true. In any case, I had fun and I'll probably revisit this later. You guys have a good one.